Welcome to another video. Let's do some calculus this time. And I have a problem that looks very straightforward. But the only problem is this power is huge. And I have a good idea what's going to happen over time. I just don't know how quickly it's going to happen or how exactly it's going to happen. So I, I have a big picture of it but I don't know the exact path it's gonna take. So we're gonna do this together. Let's get into the video. If you've seen my other videos on integrating any natural log function, I always say, once you see natural log, know that you're gonna be differentiating unless there's something special you know about it. So I know that I'm going to be differentiating ln of x, but the question is, will I take this along or no? Because I know that when I differentiate ln x, one over x is gonna show up and I'm, I can move the one over x over here. So this is what I mean. If all I'm integrating is this, ln x over x, this is easy because the derivative of the top is one over x dx and I'm done with my integration if I do u substitution. The problem here is that this is not what I'm integrating. I'm integrating this raised to power 2011. So that u substitution idea would not work because what I actually have is the integral of ln of x raised to power 2011 over x to the 2011 dx. And u substitution would not work here because when I differentiate the top, the only thing that's gonna come down is just a single x from the derivative of ln of x. It is not x to the 2011. See, it's just one x that comes out when you differentiate ln x, right? dx of ln x is 1 over x. But what we need is x to the 2011. And there is no way you can generate this from this. That's the first thing. So u substitution is not an option. Okay, so when you can't use u substitution and you have natural log function, the next thing you're thinking is integration by parts. Okay, if you thought that, you're correct. It has to be integration by parts. So the question is, what would I take as my u and what would I take as my dv? Okay, let's write that first. If we use IBP, now one thing I know is definitely the natural log part is the part you're going to differentiate. You don't have a choice. Now, are you going to take this along with it? That's going to make things very complicated. So what I would suggest is you want to rewrite this integral. So let's say this integral i is the integral 1 to infinity of ln x over x to the 2011 dx. Let's write it as the integral from 1 to infinity of, let's write it as ln x to the 2011 times x to the negative 2011 dx. Okay, it, you write it as a product, okay? I, we need to do this because it makes life a lot easier. Now, so we can call this our u, make this u, let's write it here. This is u and call this dv. So now, you know what, because I need space, let me do all the rough work on this side, and then I'll come back here and write it. So it means that our i will be equal to u dv, which will be equal to uv, I need to integer. So remember from the formula for IBP, we know that the integral of u dv equals uv, minus the integral of v du, okay? This is what formula we're going to be using. So, what I have 
is u dv. I need to find, I already know what u is, but I need to find v, which is going to be the integral of this. Do we know how to integrate this? Yes. Okay, so uh, da, 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 da. let's do it here. So we know that v is the integral of x to the negative 2011 dx. And we know what that answer is going to be. This is going to be, um, you add 1 to this and use it to divide it. It's going to be x to the negative 2010 over 2010, over negative 2010. That's what we get. E equals negative 2010 x to the negative 2010. Okay, we got our v. So now we need to find du. Okay, let's find du. du is the derivative of this. Do we know how to differentiate this? Let's do that here. So we have u is equal to um, ln of x raised to power 2011. So what would the derivative of that be? We're going to have du will be equal to this comes 2011 times ln of x raised to power 2010 times the derivative of the inside, 1 over x. So if we simplify this, it's going to be, this is going to be equal to 2011 ln x to the 2010 over x. Okay, that's all we need to write here over x. So now we can use this formula and find what we're looking for. Oh, I didn't write this v correctly. This is correct. What I wrote here is not correct. This is 1 over. So this is 1 over. Yeah, I didn't write it right. Yeah, this goes in the denominator. Okay, okay, I fixed it. So it's going to be negative ln of x to the 2011 divided by, neg it's going to be 2010 x to the 2010. And this has to be evaluated from 1 to infinity. You know what? I'm going to just write, I'm going to write it like that. 1 to infinity because of space. Okay? Minus the integral of v du. What is v? This is v. What is du? du is this. Okay. So let's try and multiply these two together. What do we see? We notice that, yeah, I think I should have written this this way so it's easier to see. You know what? I'm going to rewrite this now. When I try to multiply this by this, you notice that there's an x here, there's an x here. So this becomes x to the 2011. And then I have 2010 under, I have 2011 on top, and then I have a minus here. Okay, so when I multiply, this minus will nullify this minus. So this becomes a plus. And what I have on top is just 2011 ln of x to the 2010 divided by, if I multiply, I'm going to have 2010 x to the 2011 dx. That's it. Yeah, it, that was, that, that, that required you to be careful. So if we try to evaluate this, because this can be evaluated now, if we take the limit, firstly, if we plug in 1, let's plug in, let's do this one first. If we plug in 1 into this, ln of 1 is 0. So everything becomes 0 when you plug in 1. Okay? Now, as x approaches infinity, what you'll observe is we're going to get infinity over infinity, right? Now, when you apply L'Hopital's rule, you'll take the derivative of this. When you take the derivative of this, this function becomes smaller. But what happens here is you take the derivative of this too. This becomes bigger, actually. How does it become bigger? If you differentiate this, it's going to be 2010 times 2010. And then you have 20, 
2009 but there's a there's one x that comes from the derivative of this it's going to drop down and preserve the 2010 so as you keep going this number is going to keep getting bigger as you keep taking the derivatives i don't want to spend time doing that so that ultimately you're going to get zero when you as x approaches infinity and you're also going to get zero at x equals one so everything you see here is zero now try it on your own, but I'm not going to spend time doing it. But that's a good exercise for you, okay? So now we can see that this will go to zero. I need to mark it that this goes to zero. This is zero. Um, let me say goes to zero. Okay? So that means that the initial integral that we have, oh, by the way, this integral is one to infinity now that I evaluated this. So this integral that we're looking for is actually equal to the integral of 2011 ln of x to the 2010 divided by 2010 x to the 2011 dx. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what has changed? from the original problem. So the original problem did not have 2011 on the side, did not have 2010, but one thing it did have was ln of x raised to, oh, the power here was 2011, and the power here is 20, oh, this, the denominator still has the same power. Where is it? Yeah, this still has the same power, one over x to the 2011. So this has not changed we can actually say that what we have, what's gonna happen if we try to integrate this one more time? Okay, so let's see. And this is where you're gonna see where, where we're going. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna do integration by parts again, okay? The same thing is gonna, the same exact thing that happened before is gonna happen. This 2010 is gonna come down here just as the 2011 came down here and you had 2010 so i can predict it and then if you have the boundaries these will also go to zero okay you don't want to spend time on it you need to see it okay so what you're going to have is that i will be equal to 2011 over 2010 into you're going to have a limit that goes to zero and you're going to have plus the integral and see what happens. This is going to come down here. You're going to have the integral from 1 to infinity of, let's just do one more, 2010 ln of x raised to power 2009 divided by, okay, now see what happens in the denominator. When you, when you go with the integration of this. Remember, this is x to the, so this is x to the negative 2011. When you integrate this, you're gonna end up with, you're gonna end up with x to the negative 2010 over 2010, which was exactly what we got the first time when we did the integration. Okay, now, but, there's going to be one x that comes from the top that increases this. You see that? That's it. So you're going to, that increases the power, the number of x's here, so that this would become just 2010. This 2010 down here, x to the 2011. That's what you have. So this is the entire multiplication. Now this is zero. If you pull this guy out, I'm gonna rewrite this, okay? Because I need the space. Or maybe we're done. You know what, I don't have to rewrite it. And this process will continue, okay? You do it again, the process continues, so you'll be able to see, let's clean this up. So we can say I, is equal to, so you have 2011, will now multiply 2010. After a while, it will multiply 2009, and 2008, it will keep going 
until the last number here is zero. That means you're going to do this 2011 times. But one observation you have to make also here is that every time you do integration by parts, you're generating a 2010. There's a 2010. There's another 2010. There's going to be another 2010. There's going to be another 2010. So you're going to have 2010 2011 times. <laughs> Do you see that? So what's going to happen ultimately is that I will be equal to 2011 factorial. And the number of 2010s you're going to be getting will be 2010 raised to the power 2011. And then you'll be doing your very last integration, which is going to have this 1 to infinity of, on top here, you're going to have 1. Because anything raised to power 0 is 1 as long as that is not 0. Okay, we're going to figure all that out at the end. But this is what you have. And in the denominator, this guy does not change. x to the 2011 dx. Does it make sense? That's it. So the biggest task you have now is how to integrate this. And this is super easy to integrate. Let's do this integration separately so I don't have to write it out. Okay, now look at this. If you integrate this, this is going to be x to the negative 2011. So this is the integral of x to the negative 2011 dx. And what does that give you? It gives you x to the 2010 negative over negative. That's it. And if you evaluate this from 1 to infinity. Yep. Okay, I know we shouldn't do that, but I don't have time for that right now. Okay, so if you plug in 1, what do you get? You're going to get minus, you're going to get minus 1 over 2010. If you plug in infinity, you're going to get zero. Definitely that's zero because it's a negative exponent. So this x is supposed to be under. So you're going to get zero if you plug in infinity minus minus 1 over 2010. So what you actually have is 2011 factorial over 2010 to the 2011 times this integral is going to be 0 minus minus 1 over 2010. Okay, that's what it looks like. So this is going to end up being plus, and then you can move this 2010 and use it to multiply this so that our final answer, I hope this is correct, our final answer will be equal to 2011 factorial over 2010 raised to power 2012. There's no plus C. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.